I'm back with Colin Cantwell, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this book that came out a few years ago, The Making of Star Wars by J.W. Rensler. Because there's a lot of um, photographs of the prototypes that you made for oh, Star okay. Wars and some illustrations and whatnot. I just wanted to get some reactions to some of this, see, what, see if you have any thoughts. So Okay. Oh, I haven't um, seen it. Mm. <laughs> it's all new to me. So this is one of the pages from the book. And there's, mm -hmm. they think that these sort of sketch drawings were from George Lucas himself of like the TIE fighter, the X-Wing, the Death Star. I don't know if you've ever seen, no, or I if you'd even remember. Um, so let's see here. Um, Hal Barwood, is he yes. the one that introduced you to George Lucas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it talks about um, in 1974, you had a involvement in a San Diego planetarium space show. That was the first time to Max. Okay. A journey to the outer planets, and uh, that was uh, where I designed the ship for a long-term journey that would get to all of the outer planets and then return to Earth. Okay. And... Uh, yeah. Okay. And then it says um, they thought that you and Ralph McQuarrie were hired about the same time. Ralph thought you were hired maybe a couple of weeks earlier. That's, uh, I believe, true. And it was, uh, Ralph was painting at the same time that I was uh, doing work uh on 2001, yeah. Okay, yeah. And it looks like the, the prototypes that you built were incorporated into his paintings, like the pre-production paintings for the film. Yes, so. right. Okay, let me see here. I know I have some images here. So that's you, right? That is me. <laughs> With George Lucas and these prototypes. Yep. Um, I think there's a bigger picture here, maybe. Yep. Oh, yeah, here it is. Okay. Yep. So did you even know that picture existed? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, so you can see your... Uh, some of your tools there, your model making tools, and right, that looks like the Y wing sort of in development there. Mm -hmm. um, and there it is. Mm -hmm. So, what kind of direction did you get as far as um, how to like? Did he describe it? Did he like pencil out sort of what he wanted no. it to look like? No, or? I designed them and and, uh, and built the prototypes and. Uh, that was still uh, on the basis of our conversations as to what it should do in the film. Right. And uh, the different concepts and the different uh, uh, styles uh, were the way I worked and the, uh, the George... Uh, very much uh, influenced me just in his dialogue of the what, the, what the film should be doing yeah. at the time, what the emotional aspect was, and that uh, my, my premise was you had to instantly know the bad guys from the good guys, yeah. even though you never have. Right, just and by how it looks. How it looks and feels mm -hmm. uh, during World War II, most people knew an Italian design <laughs> right. from a German design, from yeah. a British design, yeah. from an American, yeah. and so on. And that same thing had to survive in this for it to be effective. Okay. And like they have the names like this is the Y-Wing and there's an X-Wing. Did you come up with those names as well? Yes. Okay. So let's see what else we got here. Uh, I saw that picture. Um, yeah, this just talks about um, you coming up with the designs and the models and then Macquarie sort of translating those into paintings. Um, he was sure a good painter. Oh, yeah. This is some more artwork here. Um, I think that's Macquarie. Mm -hmm. This is like some pencil sketches. I guess that's an early Death Star. Mm, I never saw those. Yeah. 
sketch. A lot different looking <laughs> with that big crater and cannon in the center yeah. there. I guess that was another design mm -hmm. concept. Another one. Um, and then you'll recognize that. That's yes. the uh, land speeder. And the reason for that we made. was that, well, we won't want this in anybody's, <laughs> but I will tell you that he brought me a picture from a Buck, R Buck Rogers comic. Oh, really? Of a land speeder. Oh, interesting. And He's talked about being influenced by Buck Rogers. Yeah. So, and yeah. Uh, I told him I couldn't copy somebody else's design uh that uh that uh so i had to do a throwaway <laughs> for uh what was going to satisfy one ship right right <laughs> and uh i wouldn't complain when it came out to <laughs> whatever it did yeah and were these all just kit bashed pieces, or did you mold some of the pieces? Or I didn't mold. Uh, I did uh, generate some pieces, but mm -hmm. uh, like just cutting plastic and things like that. It, yeah, cutting and gluing. Okay. And uh, so this is the uh, the original Millennium Falcon. Yeah. He wanted to have the turrets and so forth, and uh, needed escape pods. Uh, he had scenes where they had to go up a ramp into it and have battles around the ramp right. and so forth. But uh, the problem here was that before production, there was a spaceship design for another film mm -hmm. that uh, the basic look of this was sort of like a lizard in a stance uh -huh. with a power engine on his, on his back. Uh, <laughs> right. And the other was uh, just derived from that same sort of source image right? and was far too close. So that could not be the Millennium yeah. Falcon just immediately had scrubbed yeah, that. Yeah, it looks like the cockpit. The cockpit sort of survived. Survived, yeah. Yes. And well, some of the general design is just sort of reconfigured, kind of into a different shape, I guess. Right. Um, yeah. So there's the cockpit. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's actually a lot of good shots of this one. It was doomed by another. Another film. <laughs> Another film, yes. Yeah, because there it is in uh, yeah. the Macquarie uh, illustration. Right. I think I've got it. Yeah. And then this is the Y-Wing again. Yes. Which looks really quite close to the final design. Yes. Um, so here's the TIE Fighter, right. which looks like your prototype. Is that your drawing, or did someone else draw that? I think uh, I've got a... Yeah, there's a larger... No, somebody else drew it, but... Uh, but that's based on your model. Yes, and I sketch it much the same. Um, the... Uh, point of that is in the structure of the film. Mm -hmm. the, when you're sending, you know, the guys are going off to battle and the good guys have to have their parting things with the girls and all of that <laughs> stuff and girding their loins and, you know, <laughs> don't mess up, kid, and yeah. everything like that. And you have to know that the bad guy is different than the good guys. Right. And my idea was that this is a different kind of fighter, mm -hmm. different kind of power, and you can't even tell how Darth Vader 
gets in it? <laughs> Do they hang him from the yeah. ceiling? Is it in a cave? Uh, shoots in. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who knows what it is? But when it shows up, you definitely know that the bad fighters are coming. Yeah. Do you know where? Did you come up with the name Tie Fighter? Or do you yeah. know where that came from? I uh, think that was George. Okay. Yeah, and that's obviously very, very close to the final. I design. think Tie Fighter was out. originally uh, an acronym from the the possibility that these could be uh, photocells charging the ship. Okay. That's just another illustration. Oh, yeah. So there, that's another Macquarie mm -hmm. painting, and it's got yeah. that prototype mm -hmm. design of the TIE fighter in there. He was so good and so Yeah, fast. beautiful stuff. I was very fond of him. So there's the actual model. Yeah. And you just made one each of all of these, correct? Yes. Okay. Do you know what that little white thing inside the cockpit is? Can you, do you remember? Is it like a person or is it like a little greebly or something? I don't remember. Yeah, it's hard to tell. There's these are really good pictures of, of them, but there's just not they haven't published very many photos of these, so Yeah. These this could easily have been made as a uh duplicate with uh, better plastic and so forth mm. from my model rather than being the uh, original model, but it's quite faithful. Right. So I think you're in this picture here, right? Yes, I are. <laughs> Someone's got fingers up behind you. Yep. Is that Gary Kurtz? Uh... Looks like it was, I yeah, can't remember. Kurtz. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I was Good definitely a nerd's nerd. <laughs> yeah, we all are, right? That's just another illustration of your uh -huh. Millennium Falcon yeah. design there. Okay. Um, yeah, it's funny because that ends up in the Empire Strikes Back instead. Mm -hmm. Again, the cockpit. So here's a oh, yes. old image with the shelf with all of your... And there you can see why I put this, the scene in the <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think I've got a better picture in that, of right. that too. Let's oh, wait, see. let's see. Yeah. Let's see that. Okay. Yeah, so there's the Land Speeder, uh -huh. Millennium Falcon, Star Destroyer. And then the Skyhopper shows up in the film. Yeah. Luke's playing with it. Mm hmm. Let's see. So there's the Star Destroyer. Right. Which that's, I can kind of see the influence from exactly correct. Those yeah. models we looked at just earlier that you built before yeah. all this, right? With all that detail and everything. What was the idea behind this? It looks almost like a barcode. Uh, it was an insignia of an alien culture. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. So they know who's coming. <laughs> and uh, I didn't want it to uh, be instantly recognized as a uh, yeah so it looks foreign bad, like, nice, what is that? bad guy's evil <laughs> <laughs> so There's, here's your death star with the seam with the yeah. trench <laughs> all of the surface detail on here mm -hmm. was scribed so that it would take the light like s smaller detail and then i uh, chopped up uh, miniature bits hmm. to make the scattered uh, more three-dimensional detail. Oops, sorry. Oh, that's okay. And uh, the scribing had to be uh, accurate and good good design in relation to the uh, scaled image mm -hmm. so it would communicate the same kind of thing that they wanted for the film. Yeah, so here's a, It's is this one of yours too? Yeah. Okay. That was the uh, getaway just before uh, 
There's another spacecraft. Oh, uh, okay. Um, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> There's a bigger illustration of that one. That was going to have a very brief screen appearance and yeah. become history. <laughs> <laughs> Nice drawings. Yeah, so here's the sand crawler. Oh, yeah. Uh, I wasn't very happy with that. No? Uh, and uh, didn't know what it was. It was a predator that then captured our heroes right. out on, on the desert. And uh, uh, that's what I ended up with, but uh, I wasn't too pleased. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It looks a lot different from the, the final version, but it's it's really interesting. So here's the X-Wing, which is yes. obviously one of the more Let's famous go, ones. go to the previous. Uh, this is the way I built the X-Wing. I think I've got bigger. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Right. And it was uh, designed for the story idea. It had to take off from an airfield. Mm -hmm. So even if it took off by anti-gravity, it was going to have to do all the required things right. that it had before it <laughs> had anti-gravity. So uh, my inspiration for that was... A pub dart. Oh, interesting. So <laughs> I can kind of see that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> combination dragster and and the key idea here was that when they're actually getting into battle, it had to draw its guns. So <laughs> it would do this. Yeah. And uh, then it turned out that one of the models, uh, I think that at the studio. Uh, had a problem and couldn't open up any more than that. Oh, interesting. And uh, that looked great. <laughs> so it has sort of a Old West Yeah, it was, element it was to the, it. It was the drawing your weapons. Hmm. So here's the Star Destroyer. Yeah. Which obviously is a, another ship that we see throughout the uh, the whole trilogy. Are you aware that the first Star Wars was shot with a three foot motion control track? Hmm. That's all there was. <laughs> Not a lot of room. <laughs> right. And uh, that was a huge constraint. And they worked with it and they pulled it off in time. And then when they reshot it for a uh, the later release uh, the, uh, had uh, very simple rules straight from George. <laughs> and that was make it twice as fast and twice as big. <laughs> that sounds like George Lucas. <laughs> and, it, and that worked. That way all the previous designs for the shots would still be the same, but the quality and the detail and so forth could be improved and the action could be improved and the shots could continue longer yeah, than yeah. the three foot track permitted. Yeah, because I remember seeing in the film, they it's like it does that sort of like the X-Wings do that really slow kind of barrel roll, but don't go very far. But it's like there's all that dramatic music, but yeah, there's, <laughs> there's not a lot of movement. <laughs> right. Why don't you tell me about what's inside this uh, box here? Okay. Nurnies. <laughs> I have downstairs a hundred Nurney drawers, which in my bigger studio was along a wall. Mm -hmm. And they were all the little things that I needed for whatever type of project I was involved in. Yeah. And these were what I did with uh, going into a bad neighborhood. <laughs> and looking at the innards that were in model kits and then buying uh, 20 of them 
if they had them, <laughs> and adding that to my stock, and yeah. gradually getting a library of different kinds of pre-sculpted components. Yeah. So do you think most of these are from like the early 70s, early 70s kits? Yes. And uh, in fact, they often appear in later films mm -hmm. because the model makers and the directors and conceivers <laughs> like to play games. Yeah, little sticking uh, Easter eggs for each other, right? Right. Yeah. So on the uh, close encounters, you'll see a uh, uh, little R two D two on the <laughs> standing on the <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, alien spacecraft and so forth. 